Hello, welcome to Midwest Fishing Adventures. Today we're going to tie the San Juan worm that I use up in the driftless area. I've been having really good success on this year. There's only three materials you really need. Um, you need some red, ultra chenille, small red, uh, a TMC 105 size 10 egg hook, and typically I use 1 8 inch tungsten copper beads the copper color and but today I'm out of 1 8 inch I've tied all mine up and left too many San Juans in the trees up there in the driftless area so today I'm going to use a 5 30 second uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our hook in the vise and put some thread down just going to use some red thread to match the color of the worm so let's put some thread down And I just want to cover the whole shank of the hook. All the way back to the bend pretty much. And you can start going around the bend a little bit. Then I'm going to move my thread back towards the middle. About to the hook point or so or maybe just a little bit forward of the hook point. And that's where my first tie point is. Uh, now let's take our chenille and cut a little piece about six inches or so off the end here. So I'm going to get my chenille out. Um, you know, six inches or so. Let's cut that off. Put my chenille, my chenille back in its bag. Now, there's, let's thread our chenille through the bead. Let's see if I can do that on camera. There's a big side and a little, a big hole and a little hole, so just go through the big hole and out the little hole. And we're going to put that in the middle. Now, I need to take the hook out of ice and I want to put the hook point through the big hole. It's important. Um, you'll see why in a second here. So I'm going to take this out of the vise and just thread it through the big hole put this on my hook and then put your hook back in the vise and then even out your chenille alright perfect so now what I want to do is hold this chenille I don't really care about where the bead is I care where the chenille is and I want to take a couple wraps. I want three wraps here and I want to keep the chenille on the top One. let's get the chenille on the top here two three now I want that snug but be careful I'm using a pretty fine thread I think it's 140 denier so I need to be careful um, that I don't break the thread then I need to go under and take the thread to the eye. And the reason I put these in, uh, these wraps here, tying it down in the middle, is I want to wrap this chenille around the hook to kind of make like a segment of the worm and also to make a stop for this bead. So I'm going to take wraps, I'm going to wrap towards the front, and you want to pull these wraps pretty tight. So pull. And then when I get to the front here, Oops. I'm going to take and hold my chenille forward and then take three wraps. One, two, three. And that's going to keep that chenille right on the top, just like that. Now we got that front segment a little long, but we'll cut it off and then at the end. Then I'm going to take three or four wraps underneath and then do a whip finish. Like that. Oops, I didn't do a very good wet finish there. Be real careful with this thread. Alright, let me do a, a better wet finish. You can use your wet finishing tool. Probably make it easier. There we go. Alright. Then once I got that how I like it, I'm going to go ahead and 
trim my thread off the bottom just like that push my bead up to where I want it now I'm going to pull this chenille up and I'm going to put my thread down real quick one two alright pull my bead up so then I'm going to take three wraps on the back two three right behind there and let's get this thread cut off here alright same thing move the thread towards the bend alright and I'm going to wrap <clears throat> away from me one two three away and then I'm going to tie this back piece in now this back piece is important you may want to take more wraps also I take the whip finish over the top of it because it, it has a tendency to come undone and I didn't want to do that but that's okay but let's take this whip finish put it around the back because we'll even put a little bit of head cement underneath it here in a second finish that off cut our thread um, we're gonna trim these to the length the back one's pretty much perfect the front one's a little long trim that to our length we're gonna take our lighter and taper the ends just a little bit I don't taper too much just enough to keep the chenille from un coming undone and just giving it a tiny bit of a taper same thing with the back piece just like that alright now <clears throat> we can turn our fly over put it in the vise there we're just gonna finish up by putting a little uh, head cement wherever my head cement is which I got right here I'm going to put it on these back wraps here and you can put a little bit on the front the front doesn't typically come undone but the, the back can if you don't put a little bit of head cement on the threads and that's it that's the the bead head sand wand that has been working for me I think what makes it really uh, work well is the tungsten bead because with that tungsten bead it's heavier than lead this fly gets down really quickly and it's down <clears throat> so as soon as you cast it upstream of your target that this San Juan with the, the heavy bead sinks down to the bottom really quick so by the time it reaches the fish it's already ticking bottom and that's what you want so that's the San Juan worm that I use in the driftless region or driftless area up in Wisconsin